Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Jeff. Thank you for checking out my channel, Films at Home. Uh, on this channel, I do a lot of Blu-ray and 4K video reviews. We do some top 10 lists, and I like to just give collectors a good idea of what they should be running out to buy, uh, some really cool releases I might have, just really all about movie collecting. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely subscribe to my channel. I think you'll really like the content. Today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is another 4K review. My last 4K review of The Matrix got an insane response, over 25,000 views in just a week, and I think I gained 1,000 subscribers in one week. So thank you everybody out there who watched that one, an incredible response. So happy to all the new subscribers. So uh, thank you to all who subscribed in the last couple of weeks and to those who have been with me the whole journey. Um, definitely uh, excited to, to keep going here and keep creating content for you guys. And without further ado, today's review is Annihilation in 4K. So uh, interesting about Annihilation, it had a really interesting backstory. So basically in the US and Canada, Annihilation was put into theaters. Uh, you could go to the movie theater and watch it before it came out. Internationally, so anybody outside of the US and Canada, this was put right into Netflix for you guys. They did not release it theatrically. So a lot of people have already seen this way ahead of time. Unlike myself, I waited to see this until the 4K disc came out. Um, but basically it was due to some issues that the director and the writer had with uh, Paramount. And so Paramount is the, is the studio behind this and they wanted to make a bunch of cuts. They wanted to change the ending. They wanted to make things different. The director, uh, Alex Garland, he's the guy who directed Ex Machina, one of my favorite movies in the last few years. He basically said no, the writers said no, and so the agreement was, okay, you don't wanna change it, we don't think it's gonna do that well in theaters, so only the US and Canada gets theatrical release, everybody else goes to Netflix, and that's how they worked it out. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't do great at the box office, but I think it's really just due to the themes. It's a really like intellectual sci-fi movie, it's not your, your everyday sci-fi, it's not something like Alien, um, sci-fi horror like that. It's much more like Arrival, which actually did really well at the box office. So um, I think this is even like Arrival to another level with kind of how you have to think about it. It's a really, really involved movie. It's a really, it's a big thinker. Um, and so it's just not really a mainstream movie, but uh, we'll get into that in the review. So um, very interesting. And then the fact that this 4K disc only going to be available at Best Buy. This is one of the only times I've seen that happen. Uh, a lot of times the 4K disc will just have exclusives, so Best Buy might have a steelbook, Target will have a different packaging, you know, stuff like that, Walmart uh, have a different slipcover, but in this case, the only way you can get the 4K disc for Annihilation is to buy it at Best Buy. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that trend. I don't like being locked to one person. I feel like... I feel like Best Buy could potentially sell out of these. They could become really hard to get. Um, there's a lot of issues with being locked into one retailer and not being able to buy it at Target, Amazon, Walmart, your local video store, like all, all those different things. Places like Bull Moose, FYE, uh, Half Price Books, a lot of you guys out in the Midwest have. All those shops aren't going to be able to get this to sell. So it kind of hurts the little guys, helps out Best Buy. But again, it might be part of that weird deal that Paramount had. Uh, you know, if you want to keep the movie the way it is, then we're going to try to make money any way we can. And they probably made some good money selling the 4K rights to Best Buy. So it is what it is. But um, let's dive into this review, play that intro, and we will get started. All right, so I checked this out yesterday, popped on the 4K TV. I've got a Samsung QLED TV behind me. I was really excited to see this because it is actually a 4K digital intermediate. So the film uh, was shot digitally on, in 6K with some cameras. Other portions were shot in 4K according to IMDb. And then it has a 4K digital intermediate. So this 4K Blu-ray here is coming right from the source. Um, there's no upscaling done. It was shot at 4K and higher finished in 4K, you're getting a great 4K visual picture here. The nice thing about this is even though the movie starts off fairly gray, blue, it's not really exciting. It's very, very dull. Once they get into the shimmer, which is that area um, kind of where the new world is, um, that's kind of the whole point of the movie is that they go into the shimmer, everything changes. All of a sudden, everything's very colorful. There's a lot going on. 
Um, lots of really bright reds, pinks, purples, greens. Uh, the, the HDR here really stands out for me and the 4K resolution was solid throughout. One thing to note, and I don't know if this was part of the transfer, if this was how it was filmed, but there are sequences in here where um, on the very bottom of the screen, you'll notice, um, so it does have black bars on top of the bottom. So you, I'm not talking about, you know, the bottom of the black bars. I'm talking about the bottom of the picture. You'll notice that it kind of gets a little blurry and out of focus at times. Probably how the film was made, it probably has something to do with the cinematography, um, unless the transfer got a little muddied up at the bottom. It's very, very minor, but I did notice it in a few scenes. It doesn't really detract from the experience at all. It's just something that I noticed as somebody who's really looking uh, at the picture quality. The average viewer is probably not gonna notice it. It's at the very bottom of the picture. You can barely see it, but it is something to note and look out for. Um, like I said, HDR colors are great, especially the reds and the purples. Uh, those really stood out to me. And then, uh, you know, orange and, and green and blues. And there's a ton of color when they go into the shimmer. Uh, and everything almost seems to brighten. It's like when, they, when they're stepping outside, the world is kind of dull gray. You know, end of times, what's happening? They go into the shimmer where it's this new kind of place. Um, and all the colors change. It gets much brighter. Uh, everything is much clearer almost. It's a really, it's a stark contrast to um, the the rest of the world that they show in the movie. So I thought the HDR was incredible for that. Video was solid, but the 4K transfer here, you're getting a really, really great picture. Um, so I'm really happy that they decided to go with the 4K disc. I'm not sure if that was up in the air because of the issues with the movie, it wasn't so successful, but um, you know, maybe Best Buy picked it up and said, we'll do 4K, maybe Paramount sold it to Best Buy. I'm not sure how the deal worked, but either way, I'm really happy that a 4K release uh, was created because it's a beautiful picture uh, and they shot the film in 4K, which is becoming more common, but still sort of rare. Even for major blockbusters, they're kind of finishing films at 2K because of the CGI. And so it's nice to see a true 4K movie get a nice 4K release and Paramount uh, has been really leading the game in 4K, and they've got another home run here in terms of the visual quality with Annihilation. Now for the audio, uh, you are working with a Dolby Atmos track on both the Blu-ray and the 4K disc. That's gonna give you the best experience. Uh, there isn't a ton going on from an audio standpoint in this release, much more of a visual movie than audio, uh, but towards the end, the last few scenes have some really, really uh, creepy sci-fi, um, just, I don't know what you call it, tones and sound effects and, and almost the score of the movie changes. It gets very, very intense. Um, I thought the soundtrack was, was excellent throughout. I thought the surround sound was really good. The use of the bass, especially in some of the really scarier sequences. There's a few in here. It's not a traditional horror movie, but there's a few scenes in this movie that are um, incredibly scary. It, it does give me some vibes, like if you've played the video game The Last of Us, it kind of feels a little bit like that at times. There's some very dark, kind of gritty and just the creatures that are involved here and I uh, can't give away too much but I mean if you've seen and played The Last of Us you'll know what I'm talking about here definitely has that vibe to it and then just kind of a survival horror type thing um, but also some really just cool sequences not everything is scary some of it's just really visually striking um, so the audio while the bass is typically very low to reflect that there are some higher notes there are some scenes where where things kind of expand and you get this whole world immersive experience, you know, birds overhead, sounds in the woods, um, you know, the shimmer makes a certain sound that kind of plays throughout. It's a really interesting audio experience. I'm not sure it makes full use of the Atmos track, like something, um, say like Saving Private Ryan Wood, where there's constant, you know, action for a good portion of the movie and you have a really immersive sound stage. This is a little bit smaller, but uh, the audio is really good, surround is solid, and the bass really, really kicks in towards the end, uh, which gives you a really, really kind of dreadful feeling, I guess. The bass just... The, there's a thing in horror movies, basically, where the bass plays at such a low level that you can't hear it, but you can feel it. It's hard to explain, but you can feel it, and it kind of puts this anxiety in people. In horror movie, the filmmakers do this on purpose. They'll put this track in so low that our ears can't register it, but they know the sound's coming and it just makes your heart beat. It gives you this anxiety, it gives you this adrenaline. Uh, I, I have a feeling that they did this here with Annihilation, especially towards the end, my heart was just pumping. And the bass that I could hear was excellent. And I feel like there was this lower level bass 
that was worked in that kind of just gives you that sense of dread and adrenaline and excitement. Uh, really cool movie. And so that really added to the experience. So props to the filmmakers and the, the guys who did the audio for that. I thought it was excellent all around picture and audio. From a technical perspective, this is a great release. Uh, it's right up there, you know, with reference quality stuff like The Matrix, like Braveheart, um, you know, just really solid all around. So highly, highly recommend that from a technical standpoint, for sure. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the movie itself and the special features. So the special features for this disc, they're all in the Blu-ray. I always screw this up, so I'm just going to read them to you. I've watched a few of them, but I never remember the names of them. So we have Refractions, which is about the story origins, how the story came to be. We have For Those That Follow, which is about how they cast the movie. Actually kind of an interesting look because this movie was, it, it had a, like I said, a tumultuous kind of um, story in, in how it was created and how the studio kind of fought back against it. Very interesting stuff there. Uh, a short about The Shimmer, which is all about how they shot on location. And then Vanished Into the Havoc, which is about the visual and special effects, which in this movie are incredible. I can't remember if he won, not he, Alex Garland, but the director of Ex Machina. I feel like Ex Machina won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. This one's also going to be in the running for that. Some of the visuals are really cool, uh, especially the creatures. And then like I talked about, the colors and the effects that they have within the Shimmer. Really incredible stuff. Um, there are a few more special features on here, but it's just commentary tracks, things like that. Nothing special. And then obviously the 4K disc does not have any, no commentaries either. It's just the disc. Um, in terms of packaging, you're getting the slip cover here. I believe it's going to be the same for the Blu-ray. You're going to have the only at Best Buy sticker on the front cover. That's going to be on pretty much all of them. Um, same artwork on the middle, just a black uh, typical two disc case here. And then you've got the Blu-ray disc and the 4K disc. It also has a digital copy. If I know Paramount, uh, that copy should redeem in 4K. I have not tried it again because I give my digital copies away. I haven't confirmed with the person I gave it to whether it redeems in 4K, but based on everything we know about Paramount, this one should redeem 4K. And it's also an iTunes or, let's take a quick look here, iTunes and Ultraviolet, so I thought. So you get both of those with this uh, digital copy. It's a nice package. Uh, I'm not sure what Best Buy is actually gonna charge on release day. I haven't seen an updated ad yet. I'd imagine it's gonna be 25. I'm hoping they don't price gouge and kind of go higher because they're the only ones with the 4K. But I would definitely recommend getting to your Best Buy if you're a hardcore 4K collector and you've adopted this new format and you're all about it, you're gonna want the 4K disc for this because it's one of the nicer discs. This isn't one that you could just really settle for the Blu-ray. If you do get the Blu-ray, you're gonna be fine. It's a really nice transfer. Again, it's a 4K image, so downscaling it to the Blu-ray isn't gonna hurt. You're just not gonna get the top quality stuff and you're gonna really miss the colors that pop with the HDR. So, um, you know, overall, highly recommend the 4K. If you can't get to Best Buy or Best Buy sells out, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out next Tuesday. Uh, how Best Buy does with stocking of these and uh, pre-orders and shipments online. It could be a mess. It could be fine. They could have thousands of them or they could have like 20 at each store and sell out. So I'll be really interested to hear what happens with your experiences at Best Buy. So once you go Tuesday, let me know how this uh, you know whole experience worked out with the exclusive 4K discs. I know for Steelbooks, Best Buy is notorious for selling out. People coming in and grabbing 10 copies, selling them on eBay for twice the price. I'm hoping that doesn't happen here with Annihilation, but uh, that's kind of the way things usually go at Best Buy. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic they won't because this isn't like a big title, like, um, you know, like a Marvel Steelbook where people are going to be going crazy as collectors, but it is still an exclusive. So people always go and, and hike up the prices on eBay after the fact when they grab five of them. It's just let me know how it goes in the comments. I'll be really interested. Um, some thoughts about the movie. Like I said, it reminded me of sort of a mix between Arrival and The Last of Us. There's a lot of existential, you know, how did we get here? Human, you know, how did humans evolve? Um, how did the world begin? All this kind of really uh, existential stuff that makes you think. That's probably the scariest part of it is just, you know, how did the world start and how easy is it for the world to end or, you know, just completely change. And that's kind of what this whole movie's about. Um, you know, it, it made me think of, of movies like Interstellar too, just kind of the science behind this, how much of this was researched, you know, how much of it's 
possible, nobody really knows, but um, I would say if you're into stuff like Arrival, if you're into sci-fi stuff like Interstellar, if you liked Ex Machina, this is a little bit of a slower draw like Ex Machina was. It has a slow build and then there's a couple really um, climatic spots and then kind of slowly winds down at the end. So it's a little bit like Ex Machina in terms of, of tone and, and style, but I really liked it. I thought it deserved much better than what it got at the box office. I think that it's another great example of sci-fi and how, how far that genre has come in the last few years. There have been some really great independent stuff uh, that's come out and it does have some really great horror scenes in it. So if you're into horror and you don't mind a slow draw, like I said, it's, it's a little bit of a slow build. You're not gonna have constant action here. And that way it's very much like a rival where there's just a lot to build up to and a lot to think about while you're watching this. And then there are elements like The Last of Us where you have this action horror sequence um, that gets kind of just thrown into your face when you don't expect it. So it's really cool in that way. There's some jump scares, but nothing serious. Um, I definitely recommend it. I didn't love it as much as Ex Machina. That's one of my favorite movies, but this is probably a solid seven and a half or eight out of 10 for me. Really enjoyed it. And if you're into the genre, I think you'll really like it. So I highly, highly recommend grabbing this 4K disc if you can. Head to your Best Buy, lock in a pre-order right now if it's possible online. Uh, they may be sold out at this point at the time you're watching this, but definitely go try to get this. And if you have a 4K TV, it's gonna make the best use of that that you've seen. It's a reference quality disc in terms of video and then audio if you have the Dolby Atmos, you'll love it. So highly recommend it. In terms of a 4K disc, this is right up there, nine out of 10 for me. All right guys, so thank you for watching. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be really interested in how this plays out when this 4K disc comes to Best Buy. So let me know how your experience was um, you can let me know here in the comments. Uh, definitely remember to subscribe, but you can also let me know on Instagram or on Twitter. I will leave links to those down in the description. I always talk to people over there. I'm happy to give advice on 4K TVs, audio setups, whatever you guys have questions on. Um, you know, sometimes people send me movies and I put them in videos and call them out. I've done that the last few. Whatever you guys wanna do, just get in contact with me. Twitter and Instagram is the best way. Um, and then if you want to help support the channel, what I'm doing is I just basically have a straight donation link. It goes right to my PayPal. You can give me a dollar. You can give me $50. If you're the Prince of Saudi Arabia and you have a million dollars, feel free to give me that. Uh, that would certainly help. But that just goes right to the channel. Helps me buy some new releases that I don't always get for review. Uh, help me buy better equipment, a better setup. This is all stuff that I'm kind of working on as I get this channel going. Um, and so I, I do need a little help. It's some, most of it comes out of pocket right now, or almost all of it outside of the review copies. So anything you guys can give me, I much appreciate. Um, and I put it right towards this channel to help create better content. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you can get your hands on a copy of Annihilation uh, at Best Buy and they don't sell out and start getting sold on eBay for a million dollars. But um, hopefully you get yours. Highly recommend it. Uh, but thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.